I've read a lot about Cache OS recently and I heard that it's not just another Arch based distro. And I'm always open to a secondary Linux distribution of choice. So here I am finally giving Cache OS a try and also running some numbers on this ThinkPad X13 Gen 3. While I work on the next major shift in my computing setup, which I plan to cover sometime next year, Void Linux has established itself as the perfect Linux distribution for me, even more than the others I've used over the last 12 years, which includes Ubuntu, Debian, Fedora, and the tens of distros based on them, OpenSUSE, Arch, etc. However, with my fear of missing out, you've seen on this channel how I've kept my eyes open for a few other interesting distros as well, and tried a new one when I got a chance. More so, a distro that promises a more out-of-the-box experience also helps me identify gaps and opportunities of improvement to my handcrafted setup with Void Linux. I've had a great experience with Pop! OS and Nubara, at least until the latter started to show an increasing number of issues, including being broken right out of the box on a fresh install. I also briefly evaluated Solace, but its limited packet selection held me back. And then comes Cache OS. Over the years, I've learned that you can change pretty much anything in Linux, and a few of the only things that make one distro different from another are the release cadence, package manager and sources, the init system, etc. As Cache OS is based on Arch, it has AUR, which is probably the largest collection of software packages in any Linux flavor, and I can work with systemd as well if, as promised by Cache OS, it is optimized for modern hardware. Also, Cache OS does several things differently, so I can kind of avoid the by the way crowd, their gatekeeping and negativity. They mention a lot of technical terms that I haven't come across in my last 12 years with Linux computing, so I'm sure there is a lot of optimization there. I did not choose the X13 Gen 3, but as the owner of this machine did not need it anymore, I suddenly had a spare ThinkPad which was more modern than anything else in my fleet. I had several reasons for not setting it up with Void Linux. Firstly, this form factor and hence the use case is already covered by my X1 Nano. Also, Cache OS seems to be more suited for modern ThinkPads than the classic ones with older hardware, so it felt like a perfect match, as this was literally the most modern I could go. Most of the machines you see me installing Linux on also have a Windows license embedded in the UEFI firmware. This helps me not worry about losing a license the machine comes with and I can wipe it clean and prepare it with a fresh install of Windows for the next owner when the time comes. However, if you're trying to set up one of these that doesn't have one of those licenses nor a license sticker underneath the battery, for example a couple of HP notebooks I sold recently, I came across keysfan.com as a source for legitimate licenses that you can buy for cheap. Windows isn't the only license you can buy from them as there are several other software in the list. And you can also buy software for Mac OS. They also sell keys in bulk if you need. In order to purchase a key, simply add the desired license to the card, use one of the coupon codes and complete the payment using either a credit card or PayPal. Unlike how tedious my installation method for Void Linux and other Linux distribution usually is, installing Cache OS was a breeze, just as I expected. I obviously went with the desktop edition and not the handheld edition for this notebook computer. The only major thing I specified was user creation, letting the rest to be defaulted to what was suggested. Unlike my usual choice, I chose KDE Plasma as the default environment for a comprehensive experience out of the huge selection as I wanted to experience stacking window management for a change. Booting is pretty quick with systemd boot against grub, which I still prefer because that's what I'm familiar with. As soon as you log in, you're greeted with helpful features that let you perform tweaks, install features like the one for gaming, which include everything you need to run games, including Steam of course, and install other software through this guided interface. The default theming isn't anything extraordinary, but it is dark by default. Software selection isn't too wild either, and I'm sure some of these come with KDE Plasma and the rest are added by Cache OS team. 
Regardless, it's interesting to see some of these familiar ones that I do not see installed by default on other distributions. All the rest of the things worked out of the box as you would expect from a modern distribution, shipping with a modern desktop environment, running on a relatively modern notebook. I just did not see a camera app that I could verify the camera with, but that's okay. And then it was the time to run some benchmarks. Now for benchmarks to be useful, you need something to compare with. So I ran these on Pop OS before I installed Cache OS to have a reference. I used Foronix test suite with Sonotic as the test covering multiple areas. This suite also works well with openbenchmarking.org. I won't talk about it in this video as there is a lot of information about it already. So the results do show a slight difference, but nothing significant. I realize that may change depending on the tests you run as optimization in general wouldn't apply to everything the same. As the next steps, I'll tailor the setup to my needs by changing the default configuration, slowly installing some of the software packages I use in my regular setup, and then I could possibly also implement support for Cache OS in my dot files in some form or another. Regardless, I plan to carry this machine with me exclusively for a week or so to experience Cache OS more closely. If it doesn't work for me, I'll at least learn a few new things and may end up adding support to my setup and installing Void Linux on this one as well. That's all I have for this video. Thanks for watching it till the end and may the maker watch over you. See you in the next video.